All right, what's up? Here again with another video. This time, we're gonna be installing VTEC conversion kit. Uh, I have all the parts here on a table. I got the kit from moats.net. It's where I get all my stuff from. It comes new. You can see the legs on this high side switch do not have any solder on them. Sorry, I just had a freaking bottle of Coke right there, which is not the best idea whenever you're doing this type of stuff. So don't do as I do. But yeah, you can tell all these parts are brand spanking new and we're gonna be installing them today to add VTEC to the P75 ECU. This is the LS computer for the non-VTEC 1.8 engines. Uh, I have already marked with a permanent marker where I need to desolder to add the VTEC components. And uh, so next, I'll need to remove the five screws that hold it in. I think it's five. No, seven. Um, then you have one right here, and it holds on this. transistor or whatever you want to call it with a little heat sink on there so I'll go ahead and remove the board real quick with this Milwaukee gun I'm surprised I didn't try to spin the ECU Okay, board screws are different shape than case screws. This is a board screw. This is a case screw. Biggest way you can tell is board screws have washers, case screws do not. Case screws are a little more flat and these are a little more stubby round. These kind of look like distributor screws. Nothing really else looks like that. Uh, so then we'll take out this front one real quick. I'll go ahead and pause y'all. All right, so the one for this guy is actually pretty long. Has a little washer on it. And then you take off this guy this is like the first one I've had with this little plastic thing on it, but whatever. Then you can turn the ECU upside down. It should pop loose. This board has never been broken loose before. So I start with the back. Make sure we don't have any screws in there. I'm gonna do this two-handed. I don't wanna break it, but you usually just uh, See if I can mount y'all here. There we go. You just kind of help break it loose where it was being squeezed. All these corners and edges. The board has a coating on it that is real sticky. Oh, fuck. Well, they just bend out of that transistor. So you gotta be careful to not do what I did and bend it. This one just really don't want to come out. Huh. Interesting. So with this one, you can see it has these areas that are holding the top of the board. And so I'm definitely going to do this two-handed because, uh, yeah, I haven't ran into that being an issue for me before. But 
I just don't want to break it. It's my last board. So I'll be right back with um, me desoldering all the components that have the black marks on them. All right, so as I suspected, uh, this area had a bunch of that coating, so it was sticking. So I just kind of scratched it to break it loose and then popped it with a screwdriver. Not the best method. I was going to use a plastic trim tool, but my first attempt was successful. So then lift up and kind of slide it back to pull the, the connector out for the car. Move your case, put your board back in place, and let's get to work. So now I'll use my solder sucker and my soldering iron. I have a really fine point tip on there to help clear the holes once I suck the solder out. We're doing blank holes, so they're pretty easy to take care of with just the bulb. I do have one of the click pins to suck the solder out if I do need to use that. But uh, also, two-handed process, don't have a tripod for this, so I'm going to, um, actually I can time-lapse it with my GoPro where the mic's messed up. So let me set that up, see if I can get a time-lapse in for y'all while I solder suck these out, and then I'll solder them in for you. So I'll be right back. All right, so I just want to come here and show like, okay, we got some dirty spots here. We're going to clean those up, but we got a spot here that didn't want to go and a spot here. And there's one more somewhere else. I think it's over here, but spots like this. So I didn't want to desolder very well. So what I'm going to use is this pointy tip right so you're gonna see how it can just go straight through right it melts it so essentially what I'll be doing is coming from the top side and doing that and then since the needle tip will be sticking out the other side or this back side essentially because I'll be coming from the top I'll just slide this right over that needle and suck the rest of the solder off. So I'm gonna do that on time lapse as well, just so y'all can get an idea of how to desolder tough solder joints that don't want to desolder. I want to invest in a motorized suction gun because the bulb design doesn't work the absolute best. It works great, don't get me wrong. Radio Shack for the win, ah, but. Uh, I want to get more advanced tool so I'm not damaging boards and things like that and so on but yeah let's get to the time lap time lapse let's finish desoldering this and we can get these VTEC circuits in
right, so we have my little makeshift board holder here. I need to get an extra pair of hands. But, uh, you do what you can, right? <laughs> Alright, so, set you down for a second here. Point the light at me. Put the board in front. Alright, so, we can see the board all lit up. We're looking to see if we can see through these holes that we made. That's the ticket. So we got light through all of them. Pretty good. So now we'll start dropping in circuits, bending the wires, and then uh, soldering them in place. The easiest part. All right, so our VTEC conversion is done. We have our C60, our J10, our R30, R142, 143, 144, our D11, IC14, this big guy,
Q30, Q26, which is going to be this little guy. And J10, if I didn't already go over that, that's right here next to C60. So this is all our VTEC stuff right here in the VTEC area. J10 probably enables it since it's a jumper. Uh, <clears throat> could look better, but oh well. Now all we got to do is go into HTS and enable VTEC on the chip. And then I can test out and see if VTEC works. So let me go ahead and burn the ROM onto the chip with the VTEC system enabled. Because right now it's not since I don't have it. I didn't have it. And it was pointless to have it switch fuel maps and dump fuel and change ignition when the motor is still on a low cam. But yeah, I'll go ahead and put the ECU back in the computer case, back into the car with the HTS ROM with VTEC enabled, and then we can go make a test hit. All right, so we got the lid on the computer, the map uploaded with VTEC enabled. So we'll go ahead and plug in our ECU. Connectors in, put them all into place, uh, and so for the test, I'll just simply use the Bluetooth data logger and my phone to see if VTEC is turning on and off. Um, and then we'll have to listen for it because the chip can turn it on and off all at once. But if the system isn't working, or you know, with the way having configured, it'll just try to turn it on and it won't actually work so we won't get any check engine lights but let's go ahead and start the car up get tuner view over here it's waiting should be at 45 so we're gonna add that in here <clears throat> and we'll actually let's get one that has LEDs gosh dang it so I have this one that has LEDs we will make this one VTEC
we've successfully added VTEC to the ECU. We're seeing it in the data log. I'm hearing it in the exhaust and intake, so we know the system's turning on. So we did it correctly. And we still got Bluetooth data logging going on down there. Have some kits coming out soon. Again, thanks for watching. Peace.